Uh, we're all honored to be here, part of the 50th anniversary celebration of the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship. It's round two for 2022, the Carson City Motorsports Hangtown Classic. Jason Wagan and the Golden Boy Brock Lover here, the six time AMA National Moto Cross Champion. We're headed to our fourth and final race of the day, and they have been epic so far. I, you know, I get put in the booth and I have the most exciting race yes. ever to commentate. This has been easy. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure to be alongside of you, Jason, and uh, it's God. I uh, hope we, the races continue like this. Yes, well, we'll show you the 450 Moto number one from a little over an hour ago with our highlights from that one. Good jump for Jason Anderson. Thought the 21 had the whole shot, but just sneaking around is going to be Chase Sexton to get it. Yeah, he had one little kick of the rear wheel there. It kind of caused him to back off and then Chase just went right around him. So Sexton to the lead. Remember that story. Big crash from Josh Gilbert, man. That is a likable young man out of the United Kingdom. Is so fast coming over to the U.S., but goes down hard. Yeah, it's a big downhill to be getting off on right there. It's a steep hill, and that's a hope he's okay. And then Aaron Plessinger goes a little wide on this berm. You see in the foreground, loose berm, broke away. Rear end goes over the top, and he falls. Good battle here. Christian Craig getting around Ryan Dungey. Move up into the top five. That pushed Dungey back to six. Eli Tomac was just ahead in fourth. Ken Roxon third. And then here's Roxon held up by a lap rider here. I just don't know why the lapper just turned around at the odd, the weird, the inopportune time. Turns around and then just uh, causes himself to crash and then takes bumps into Ken Roxon, obviously. Here's the rematch. Anderson in the second half of the race. Just down five seconds. Catches Sexton. Sexton catches a lap rider. Anderson to the lead. Yep, you can see Chase check over there and go, okay, I can't do anything about it, but I better try to counter here pretty soon. And he would. It was this close, the last lap, going around lap riders. Anderson able to play defense. Sexton still there with the checkers in sight. It's going to be 0.3 seconds, the final margin of victory. Anderson and Sexton, it doesn't get any better than that. Those are your results in the first moto. Roxon a distant third. Tomac fourth. Almost caught Roxon there at the end. Craig wins that battle with Dungey. Roley, Marchbanks, Plessinger, Barsha, that was your top 10. All right, so that is great racing here. We expect more of it. See Ryan Dunge in the sight lap. June 14th, 2016, today's date. That is the last time Ryan Dungey competed in motocross until last weekend. He has won 69 promo, or the 69 races have passed since that time and 138 gate drops. And last week's winner, Chase Sexton, wasn't even pro when Dungey was last racing. Yet he's back in contention. Now six years removed from that day at Thunder Valley, the three-time 450 champ will go to the gate looking to improve on a fifth-place finish last week at Pella. We sat down with him last week to ask the most consistent rider of his generation why he's making this comeback. I mean, even since I stopped racing, it was, uh, I went to watch my very, two weeks later, I went to watch Glen Helen. And then just sitting on the, uh, in the bleachers watching those guys race, there was a feeling like, man, I want to be out there. My goal is to do the whole season. Um, we, we as a team decided that we're going to uh, commit to the first two uh, for sure. And then after that, depending on where things are at, if, yeah, if I'm not happy, team not happy, we, you know, we don't want to force anything. But the mindset is to do all 12 rounds. You know, for me, I had uh, wanted this challenge for a, a while. Um, I have attempted multiple times to try to um, to come back and race, um, and, and with this time working. Um, but uh, it, was, it was actually nice. We were doing a lot of testing, so I was getting a lot of time on the bike. Uh, the prep was good. And then with some of the guys, um, like Cooper and Marvin, not doing outdoors, uh, there was some, some opening. So I knocked on the door, and it, and it, it, was, it was open. And, um, and, uh, and on top of that, it's just a challenge I wanted for a long time and something I'm really excited about, actually. So there is Dungy on the gate, sixth in Moto 1. There's your uh, winner of our season opener, the points leader, Chase Sexton. Wasn't pro the last time Dungy raced one of these races. That's great. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> remarkable to me. But you know what? We're the benefactors of Ryan Dungy knocking on that door, and I'm glad he knocked. Yes, exactly. Good to have him back in the game. But the eyes are going to be on Anderson and Sexton after that phenomenal first moto battle. Maybe we get a rematch here in moto number two. Stay with us. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive.
General Tire. For whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And by Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. GoPro course preview. We got Justin Barsha running the GoPro on his Charlie Designs Red Bull gas gas. You get to hear a bike rev when it's on Barsha's bike. <laughs> it does do that. <laughs> it's real quick at the MX versus ATV Legends track map in here, Brock. Yeah, it's just been a great layout here. A lot of hill change, a lot of elevation. Uh, you know, just a beautiful viewing track for the spectators. Uh, hillsides on both end of the uh, bookends of the of the land here in a valley, and you can see right here going up the rollers. We follow the little arrow down there up to the top, straight down the hill. Big ruts right here. We've seen a lot of action in that area. Little hip jump here, down to the right, and then this is where we saw right here a little uh, Justin Cooper to come off the track there. Went fly 150, and then right here the track comes into a little different combo that we've seen in the past, and it's uh, the track has just been fantastic today. It's KTM keys of the moto, Brock. Yeah, good start. It's getting redundant, I know. And non Honda riders, uh, to, you know, we had to have, we saw that Jason Anderson up running up front, and then Chase Sexton, he's running the red up front too, so they're, they're, Honda's being represented. Yeah, somebody finally did break through. It was Jason Anderson who just edged out Chase Sexton to win that first moto, but we are hoping to get those two to hook it up again. They pulled away from everybody else, and they put on a classic in the first one. It was a clinic on how to ride. You can watch those two. They're a little different styles, no question about it. I talked about Jason Anderson being a little bit like almost shredder surfer kind of guy yeah. and and uh, Chase Sexton anybody wants to be a good motocross rider emulate him get his basics what he does he just all the fundamentals are spot on it is textbook but there's that one other factor you mentioned it the keys to the moto the start will they start together like they did in the first moto fly racing 32nd card is up who else can get in the mix Roxon Tomac Dungey Caroli Christian Craig there are a lot of other contenders in the 450 class shout out to our FMF privateer power award winner Frederick Noren on the BBMX KTM. Likeable old vet out of Sweden. Out of Sweden. And uh, good to see him back at the races and also good to see the BBMX team back at it as well. All right, so we are ready to go. Riders, bring the revs up and the gate is down. Get a view right there. It looks like a KTM on the inside. KTM. Yeah, in front. I think that's Tony Carolla who's got it. Yeah. Oh man, the first hole shot from our nine-time world champion just moves it sideways, shows the American what it's all about. And Ken Roxon able to sneak up the inside on Carolla. Sexton is there, Dungey is there. Anderson was a bit buried, but not too far back now as they go uphill. He's on the 21. So Roxon at the number one spot. Let's see what Carolla can do with a good jump. Yeah, you see first moto winner Anderson looks back about seventh or eighth place, tucked in behind Tomac. And we'll see what happens. You know, Roxon just amazing move there. Crowley, big scrub and all that, and you're not sure if that didn't slow him down because Ken Roxon, <laughs> it, did, it didn't intimidate Ken Roxon. Well, it was fun, though. This is the nine-time world champ. Just had a bucket list. He wanted to get some things done before he officially retired, and that included racing in the United States. Originally only for two rounds. Now we hear he's entered for the first four because he's having fun. But look at Ken Roxon. Uh, that's fun. Pulling away in a hurry. Send it uh, down to Jason Thomas at more than 94. JT. And Ken Roxon, we, we always talk about slow twitch and fast twitch muscles, and Ken Roxon has to have some of the fastest twitch muscles in this sport. A lot of people relate him to world-class sprinters. You let him get out front on this first lap, and you see the gap he's already building. It's just not something you see very often in this sport or, or elsewhere. He's gone. You don't even see Caroli or the rest of the field in a shot, Brock. I, I love it. I, I, I just, this is, I don't know. I, I would like to think a few times in my career I kind of did the same thing where you just lay it on first couple laps, see what you can do, and then back it down to the 90, 90% level. But Chase Sexton looks like he's already worked his way into second. And yep. uh, he's, he's not going to settle in here and let Ken get disappear. We're back to the 1-2 for the Red Riders. There is Dungey circulating there behind his teammate to Caroli in fourth. And it's Tomac Craig. Here's the trouble spot. Anderson is seventh, and all six riders in front of him can hustle. Yeah, that's the thing right there. Anderson gets a seventh or eighth place start, but guess what? When you look ahead of him, it's the six fastest guys on the track in the first moto, and that's who's all ahead of him. So this isn't going to be easy. Uh, you know, he, he might work his way up one at a time, but it could take a lap or two to get each one of that. And it's, uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen with Chase X. And some big mistakes of Caroli, the rider out of Italy, who admits that the American bike, the American KTM, is a lot different than the bike that he had been testing and riding in Europe, and he's got to adapt. 
Yeah, we were on the Monster Energy show last night yep. together. You host that, and it was uh, my pleasure to be a, one of the guests. But and Tony Caroli was the first guest, and I got to listen to some very good insight. He talks about the frame on the KTM in America being production-based, the European works works frame that they use in the MXGPs. It's a little stiffer construction, so it's uh, he had to get some adapting to it and change some bike setups. And he said normally if he's at full fitness and strength, he can work around it with riding style. But he said late in the motos when he's tired, it's hard to do that. He wasn't on the full championship level training program coming into this. Uh, so he's trying to adapt to the bike and the fitness and trying to have fun with it. Not easy when you got Ryan Dungey and Eli Tomac all over you right now. And then knowing Jason Anderson's back there too, yep. the guy that put 30 seconds on the third place rider last moto. So we'll see what happens here. I'd like to you know, see if Eli Tomac can get back on the pace. Remember, he's had such dominant rides here at Hangtown. You'd think that he would just kind of be able to channel that old Hangtown Eli Tomac experience, but it just hasn't quite come together yet. So hopefully it happens this moto. There's the pass. Another classic Tomac Dungey battle. Didn't know if we'd ever get any of those anymore. So we just had it. So Tomac makes the move on Dungey, and Anderson is in a hurry. He is caught quickly. Can he make passes quickly? Yeah, he's already whipping, scrubbing, doing anything he can. Look at this move right here. Whoa. Dumps inside and just, he just hit the throttle so Jeez. hard coming out of that rut. The, the, his big KX 450 just about leaped out of that rut. He ended up standing. The bike launched him right up onto the pegs. Beautifully executed. So this is what we're saying about Ryan Dungey coming back from retirement. The intensity in these early laps. I mean, these guys are riding like their lives depend on it. Uh, definitely Jason Anderson knows his overall depends on it. So right, he's pinning it. You can see he reached out when he went around Ryan Dungey, he grabbed a tear off, a couple little elbow. I like to see when he does his little scrubs, he gets his elbow up a little bit. And he just kind of dips his head a little bit. Like I said, it just reminds me of a guy just enjoying himself kind of on some sort of board sport. <laughs> okay, so it'll be fun to see if he can keep pace or go after Tomac, who is fourth. Roley still hanging strong in third. Sexton has got the lead down to 1.4 seconds on Roxon. Here's a fun battle. Yep, and the camera pulls away a little bit. We can kind of get all the grasp of where everybody is in position here. Downhill, big off camber right here. This is more steeper even than it looks. Fully off camber. That's very steep right there. And they off going across the face here, getting a good run, trying to get all the power to the ground. Right here, setting up for that big run. In the past track designs, that was a little longer run up to there. I really like the later track design. They've done a great job here at Hangtown. Corolla, the nine-time champion out of Europe. He's 36 years old. He's here with his wife and his uh, son, and they're getting the tour of the United States while they're here. So really trying to find that balance of fun, but it's serious right now. Yeah, at the pro day at Paula last Tuesday, it was, and. Uh, Tony was there, and one of the fans asked him, was like, hey, what about this California ground and all that? He's like, hey, I'm from Sicily, man. I know, I know all about hard background. I grew up riding on it. You know, later he moved to the Lommel area in Belgium where he based, the team was based out of, and, and then he got competent in sand, but uh, he knows all about all hard back in both California style there. So a couple battles to watch, Caroli versus Tomac, and now it's Sexton versus Roxon. Yeah, Chase is just, man, he's like I mentioned earlier in the first moto, it's watch this guy's style. It's everything from being on the balls of his feet to how he grips the bike to keep the pressures off of his arm, his line selection, his shoulder position, his head position. He just does everything fundamentally so accurate, and it's just what you want to do. And his last lap was a 2.11.9. Kenny's was a 2.13.3. So wow. he's, you know, 1.4 seconds faster, and he just... He's got the speed to burn right now, and he's not. He's doing it with limited effort. And they have pulled away from everyone else. You can see Caroli back there, but it's about three seconds to gap between he and your leader. It's actually Tomac now in the number three spot. Yeah, Tomac is there as we're trying to watch that battle for the lead. So we will keep tabs now on Caroli dealing with Anderson as you watch that Thor battle box on the right. Anderson trying to follow Tomac through. He does not want the Honda riders to get away. Yeah, this is... Uh, I think the last time Caroli was on a track with Jason Anderson was probably in his home country, Italy, but uh, he, he knows. These guys pay attention, trust me. The Americans pay attention somewhat to the GPs, I mean, as close as they can, and these guys pay attention to the Nationals. They, 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 oh, it makes it, Anderson it, squeezed by there. Yeah. Oh, almost gave it back up. A couple of mistakes. Yep, yeah, beautiful pass, and you saw it's hard to see from the drone shot. We got to see a great shot of it, but we didn't see the bump that the rear end of Anderson's bike just kicked. 
So he lost all the breaking ability, shot wide, and Caroli almost got him back. All right, so I'm curious here. Can Anderson and Tomac run together and bridge the gap and get to these Honda guys? Can Sexton get Roxon? Or maybe all of those things happen. Maybe we end up with a four-rider battle for the lead. And you see Tomac right there trying to make that outside rut. And it, it almost looked like he was not, not, floundering is not the right word. Don't get me wrong. But you, can, you can't tell how gnarly and deep those ruts are. And he's just trying to go as fast as he can through them. And it's just kind of hanging on for dear life. Back to the lead here. Sexton applying heavy pressure on Ken Roxon. He's closed it down to nearly nothing as they go over the old fly 150. Roxon showed some fight last week, though. Oh, they almost came wheel yep. to wheel. There's the jump we talked about, the clearing it, and the, and the Lawrence brothers were both doing it. We have that new section there. And up that elevator jump to the top. See, Chase takes the outside. A lot smoother out there for Sexton. And I'll tell you what, he didn't do that jump line into the rollers, but I think he's actually quicker not doing it. Roxon's been around this game for a long time, the two-time champion of the series. 2014 and 2016, he's just riding his lines and making that Honda as wide as it can be. Nothing dirty here, but he's not making it easy on Sexton. No, he's had so much experience that veterans like that don't just give it up that easily. They know how to keep you at bay when they need to. All right, it's going to be a battle of lap times here. What can Tomac and Anderson do from third and fourth? And they're almost all the same. 211 for Sexton and Tomac and Anderson. 212 for Roxon. Well, Jason, you mentioned uh, lap times on that. You know, Ken Roxon, his best lap of the race right there. Usually, when Ken Roxon, we saw him early on yep. taking kind of that flyer. We talked about building up a big lead and then sort of managing it. Well, to consider that lap right there was his fastest lap, a 212 flat. And Chase Sexton was a 211-4, so he's closed it right down. But unless he makes a pass, he can't do it. He, he, you know, he has to make a pass to do a better lap time than Ken Roxon at this point. He's on his rear fender. And Tomac and Anderson still digging back there. Back at it with the two Honda teammates. This downhill has opened the gates for a lot of passes, and you see Sexton starting to experiment with the right side. Yep, that was the section I was talking about earlier with Tomac and Kroll. It just is so gnarly down there. I can't believe these guys. And now they go into those big, big old rollers. And these things are 450s wide open. Whoa. They're flying. Look can at Roxon Sexton. get there and block his teammate? No. Almost. Cannot do it, and Sexton to the lead. Yep, that was a great pass by Chase. Just carried that Woo. momentum. He had a lot more momentum, a lot more speed, and instead of giving it up at the top of the corner, he just went to the wider outside line, just held the speed that he had built up and just carried it into a pass. But look at Roxon. Look at the aggression. Yeah. Look at the fight back. And he said that is a real key. He wants to leave it all there on the racetrack. And by the way, Eli Tomac is starting to get there. Yep, we're seeing Tomac start now. Look at Tomac dropping into the 211 lap times. He's got a 211.5 was his best, but he did a 211.9 that one. So other than Chase Sexton, he was the second quickest rider on the track. And now all of a sudden, we're going to see when he goes by the start finish line. This probably be his best lap, maybe the possibly the fastest race lap of any rider because he's closed in on the two leaders. And Roxon is still right there. He fought his teammate Sexton all the way to the end last weekend, and he wants to do it again here at Hangtown. And Jason Anderson is finally. Here's Roxon. Yep. Woo. Giving it a fight. Mm -hmm. Jason Anderson's finally worked his way into fourth place, and so this is kind of what we all want to see. We, we'd really like to see. I know we want to see Kenny in there if we can, but we'd sure like to see at least a three-way battle, maybe a Sexton, Tomac, Anderson, and hopefully Roxon can stay in that hunt too. Okay, so Anderson made a little mistake that I caught out of the corner with the drone shot on the other side of the course. Lost a little bit of ground. Hey, we got more legends here, not even just on the motocross side. We got the MotoGP world champion, Kevin Schwantz, hanging out with Jason Thomas. Is this really happening, JT? It is really happening. Your 1993 world champion, Kevin Schwantz. Now, I would expect you to see Laguna Seca, right? Not Hangtown. What brought you out today? Just, uh, you know, Caroli coming back and racing, Dungey coming back. I thought it was a great time to come see Hangtown, a classic that I've never been to. Well, it's been a reunion of legends, everybody from Chuck Sun to Brad Lackey and on and on, Steve Wise earlier today. So mixing a little road racing in with it, incredible to have you here. We're all big fans of your career. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. That is awesome. One of the American legends of road racing, what is now called MotoGP, back then the 500 World Championships. Everybody wants these stories. Roxon back in the game. Sexton picking up getting to another level and Eli Tomac Eli Tomac is there he's all over Ken Roxon for second Sexton not too far ahead we are starting to see a vintage Tomac Hangtown ride 
This is fantastic. This is exactly what we wanted to see. I mean, it, Tomac, we know he has it in him. We all have seen it. Oh, yeah. And so, especially on this ground, I mean, if there's one racetrack that he's kind of been dominant uh, compared to the other riders, this is maybe it. I mean, first pro race win ever was right here on the 250, and the woo, crazy airing it out. Sending it flying is Tomac. So he is on his game right now. The new champion of Monster Energy Supercross. Getting his motocross legs back underneath him. Another classic duel, Roxon and Tomac. We have been watching this for a decade now. And they're fighting right behind maybe the next generation star, Chase Sexton. Listen to the crowd, they love this. This is, this is what we all came for, no question about it. Just to see the battle here. Look at all in the same picture. This oh, is getting exciting. So the challenge is going to be, can Anderson answer this from fourth and make it a four-rider battle? You occasionally see the green fenders of the Monster Energy Kawasaki lurking back there. Lap times. Tomac put in a 2.10. That is the best lap of the moto, and that's why he's closing. Yep. That's what I was talking about on this last lap. I figured if that lap, it looked like he was going to put the best lap of any rider and he did all right we're putting tabs on anderson now to see if he can get there so roxon's in a tough spot he wants to fight off tomac he doesn't want to let sexton get away he's got to play offense and defense at the same time and you know tomac when he's on his game he gets better as the moto goes on and we're not even halfway through this is absolutely what we wanted to see especially coming into the lakewood round where he's hometown you yep. saw how good I know say bias, but uh, supportive. The crowd was in the Denver Supercross. We know that the Lakewood Colorado. I think he's got guy. it right here. Oh, he's trying to the outside. No, Rock's did a great job defending from the inside. Yep, but he's got the momentum right here. Let's see if he carries Ooh. it in the corner. He Rock's does. In. Yep, it's going to stick. Yeah, Rock's had nowhere to go. He just couldn't get to that inside. He tried to do the outside as quickly as possible. It wasn't enough. You still see Anderson back there as well. I'm telling you what, this crowd is going to go nuts I just if Tomac starts making moves on sex. I just marvel at how fast Eli can get in and out of a corner. I just, I, just that inside rut right there, he just did that pass, and he gapped, when he did it, he gapped Ken by five bike, ten bike lengths. That's incredible. It was rough at the opener for Tomac, who had a, actually dropped back uncharacteristically in Moto1, and we thought maybe that was uh, the knee injury from Supercross. Say no, they just needed some work on the bike setup. We're halfway through, 15 minutes down. 15 minutes to go. You can save 15% or more on your insurance with Geico. But you want to stay here. Anderson was able to run Sexton down and battle for the lead in Moto 1. Tomac's looking to do it here in Moto 2. I just got a little glimpse of some green in the background, and it didn't look like a tree to me. It was a green Kawasaki <laughs> KX450 with the number 21 on the front. C starting to come on here. Don't count uh, out Anderson. Four riders on a torrid pace. Craig riding well in fifth. Paroli, Dungey, Barsha, Plessinger, Freddie Doran of the BBMX. KTM is 10th. So Tomac would be up to third overall after making that pass. I don't think he's satisfied with that. He wants the Moto win. A nice little showdown and even a mental battle here. Sexton has been, on average, the best rider to start this season. Tomac wants to serve notice that he's going to be just as tough here in motocross this year as he was in Supercross. Well, Anderson just equaled leader Chase Sexton's lap on that last lap. They both did two 12 zeros, and so they're just... Uh, oh, you can see him. He's coming. He's yep. coming. Yeah, he's going to go after Roxon. Round three of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. It's headed to the Rocky Mountains next Saturday. It's on the line for the Thunder Valley National in Colorado. Catch it live next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern on MAV TV. And our first 450 moto next week will air live on NBC. We'll have Ricky Carmichael in the booth, be rejoined by Will Christian of the NBC team. So that'll be a really good showcase for the sport. And we can only hope we get action like this. Anderson, Roxon, Craig, Dungey, Caroli, Tomac, Sexton. It has been phenomenal to start this campaign. It has been, absolutely. And I think Jason Anderson realizes right now he's going to have to put a little bit of a push in right now. He's got about six seconds to make up. And he's going to take it's going to take all of his uh, skills and energy and <laughs> physical conditioning to do it. But he's uh, he's one that's capable of it. Well, there's no doubt Anderson is motivated. He's never got one of these 450 overalls in motocross. Another moto win today. I believe that was the fourth of his career. Can he turn it into an overall? He's going to need everything he has and maybe some mistakes by the riders in front of him. He went two and a half 
On the entry of that section, he cased it. He did. Two yes. corners before that right-hander, right before that fly 150 jump. Uh, that was a remarkable corner. And then he just hit that uh, big jump there and face planted the second one. That was a little further than he expected to do. So you know to do that, he was carrying exceptional exit speed out of that corner. Unreal what Anderson is doing right now. So we'll watch his lap times in a moment. Also, as he's trying to put pressure on Roxon, just as Tomac is trying to do it with Sexton. And you got to give it up to Kenny Roxon. He's not laying down by any means. He's keeping Eli Tomac in check, and he's only just a few seconds behind Eli. But uh, Anderson's still trying to gain, get in there and get into this battle, too. Yeah, it actually ended up being a, an off lap for Anderson on time. He only went 213 ahead of them. Roxon and Sexton went 212. Tomac went 211. He continues to close on your leader. A lot on the line here. I know it's only the fourth of 24 points paying motos this year, but Sexton is really trying to establish himself as the alpha early this season. He doesn't want Eli Tomac to get him, but here he comes. And look at the extreme line that he's taken on the very, very inside there. But man, oh man, look at Eli Tomac make a run on him here. This drone shot really shows how close these guys are. Outside for Sexton, that's dangerous. Now Tomac able to show him a wheel. That's that inside rut that he did the earlier pass on Roxon, and now look at it. Oh, this is it right now, and the fans are absolutely loving it. Eli Tomac finding the groove, finding the form here in the fourth moto of the season. Uh, this is epic Eli Tomac right here coming on hard, going into the beast mode. And that's right, and again, he only gets stronger as the race goes on. As we said, 10 minutes and two laps to go. Can Sexton hold him off? Yeah, I know he'd like to win this moto right now to start, you know, just to settle in his season. It just didn't start off how he wanted to. We talked about the bike setup wasn't right. You know he wasn't able to really train and practice and do the testing he wanted to. And who knows if his physical conditioning was exactly where he wanted to either because he you know, had to set off the bike and give his knee a rest. So. Talking to the team, they're actually happy. He was able to ride a little more than they expected. They found out, oh, and Sexton goes into a lap rider. We saw that same thing happen in the first moto. I don't think that slowed him up, maybe just a fraction of a second, because they did actually make contact. Wow. Yeah, that wasn't uh, that wasn't Sexton. That's twice in two races that he's had contact yes. with the back, back, back of the pack rider. And I think it was Devin Harriman, 216 on the uh, on the KTM that he bumped into. We are back and it is on. Eli Tomac has caught Chase Sexton. So the new young star of the 450 class of Lucas Oil Pro Motocross and the three-time champion hooking it up in a battle for the moto win. And you know, it wasn't really that Chase again. Chase isn't really doing anything wrong. These guys are just stepping up the pace and Eli Tomac just dropped a really quick lap at the last one and he's now in, got, his, got, his, got Sexton in his sights. Watch Sexton here with the lap rider. This is moments ago. He's gonna go to the inside of this left-hander. Bam. You know, that's twice we've seen a lapper turn around and kind of at a, in an inopportune time. I mean, oh, they got to pay attention. Big run up that hill. Yeah. Sexton able to get to the left side and block it. You like what you're seeing from Tomac on these downhills, though. I do. He looks like he's really like he talked to he talked to the uh, suspension guy earlier. I mean, uh, Rick Gilmore and talked about the balance of his bike, trying to keep it even, keep it high so he can push real hard in the ruts and not drag the foot picks. And that's what we're seeing. He's pushing hard. And so is Chase Sexton, though. Pulling away from the Rocks and Anderson battle in third and fourth. Another shot at it from Tomac. And much better this time. Sexton went way wide a lap ago. He adapted to that inside. Big launch from Tomac! <laughs> oh, man, the crowd. You can see the crowd over on the fence over there. They're just loving this. This is awesome. Let's He's greasing this yep, inside there line. It is. A little mistake from Sexton as well. Yep. Eli Tomac's in the lead for the first time in 2022. That is absolutely epic Tomac right there. There's nobody that rides ruts better than he does, especially feet on the plane. And now Thanks. another battle. Anderson has caught Roxon. And this might be enough for the overall. Sexton could be looking at a 2-2. Anderson, if he makes this pass, could be looking at a 1-3. And that would be advantage Anderson, but he's got to get Roxon first. Yep, he's got to get Roxon for the overall here, the 45 points with best a 2-2. 
but it's just uh, man, oh man. <laughs> I just saw that pass on Tomek. It's just incredible skill. He does it with feet on the pegs and he just it, it never puts his foot down in those gnarly ruts and he just he gets it done. Oh, this battle is great right now. Roxon versus Anderson, and they've got a weave through lap traffic as well. I don't know if Anderson knows the math. Now that Sexton has been passed by Tomac, this pass would give Anderson the overall win. How is Roxon doing this, getting around this lap traffic? Oh. Anderson around the outside. He's got it from here, I think. It's just, well, he's all over the Woo, he does have markers, it. and he does have the pass. That's just all throttle and, and determination there, so. Again, it's just getting back to our I was talking about Tomac and his rut skills. It's like people who ride mountain bikes that are clipped in the peg. You know, when you're clipped in your pedals. Sorry. It's just try imagine doing that same thing with your foot pegs. Clipping your feet onto the motorcycle foot pegs and ride. And that's kind of how Tomac has learned to ride. And he does it so exceptionally well and uses to his advantage. Well, just imagine the hours and the discipline of training at a young age that he and his dad John put together to get that type of skill. Yep. And on, on mountain bikes, no question about that it. That too, yes. Yep. Yep. So there it is. The overall has changed. If we total up the championship points of both motos, Anderson will have the most. He will just edge Sexton and just edge Tomac, and that would make Anderson for the first time an overall winner in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Yeah, I've always liked when, I mean, it's way back when we went to the point system that we have here, but it gives a premium to the win. It gives you that extra three, you know, the extra point, the, you know, you get three more points than second. So, the, you know, a, a one three beats a two two, and I always liked that. The Olympic scoring system, it didn't do that. I've, you know, I, I know sometimes people have lost races, including myself, or somebody with a two two beat you, and you would have won the first moto they did. But I, I think winning's more important. Listen to this crowd at Hangtown. They love the Renaissance ride from Tomac. And they would love to see Anderson get this win. But one man can change all that. Chase Sexton is not done yet. He would love to get the moto win, and that would also give him the overall for the second week in a row. He's digging. Yeah, first moto, we saw Chase Sexton get in the same exact position with Anderson. And the next thing you know, he was uh, almost a photo finish at the finish line because Chase Sexton did not give up. And at the finish, remember when the interviews, I thought Chase Sexton looked very, very fresh. Jason did, didn't, Anderson didn't look spent, but Chase looked extremely fresh to me. There's plenty left in the tank of the 23. He is closing back in on Tomac. Now, Tomac missed some time, didn't even race the final Supercross of the year after he wrapped that Monster Energy AMA Supercross title with the MCL injury in his knee. But the good news is, according to the team, they said it really bothered him the most in whoops in Supercross. So once they started riding motocross, they realized he didn't need as much time off of the bike as they feared. So he didn't lose as much bike time or as much fitness. They really chalked up last week's struggle to just bike setup that they hope they have rectified today. It certainly looks better. Yeah, and if you follow, I mean, to give a shameful plug, if you follow me on at, at MX Golden Boy on my Instagram, mm -hmm. I actually was hanging out with Eli a little bit and his dad afterwards after he wrapped up the championship, and I did get a chance to talk to him, and now that the Supercross is over, he said he was struggling, like, in the in middle of the moto at the Supercross, middle of the main event, yeah. could not grip the tank and could not get through the whoops. It was in too much pain. So it was good that he was able to spend a time off, and now he's back at it. And last week, I, you know, I wasn't sure if he's 100% physical, but he said it was, and it was just uh, the bike had just missed the setup, and he didn't feel like pushing it too hard. Well, he's showing he's strong right now, and he's going to need to because Chase Sexton, yes, it's just like Moto 1, had the lead, lost it, regrouped, and it's coming back. Yeah, he's, uh, he did. He looked fresh. He looked like he could have jumped right off that podium and just go right back to the starting line. And so he's put his homework in. He's put a lot of conditioning in, and he's showing it late in the race. And I'm uh, I'm impressed, but there's, you know, Tomac's still riding good. Don't get me wrong. It's always easier to be the one chasing. And, and, uh, and, and when we get deeper into this lap, we've only got three and a half minutes left before the two-lap board comes out. And Tomac, if he gets into some more lappers, he's the one that's going to have to battle the lappers. So with that advantage, Sexton. All right, so another lap clicks off. Three minutes and two laps to go. Tomac versus Sexton. Now, Tomac is not going to be able to win the overall today unless something completely out of his control happens. But Sexton can if he makes this pass. So there is a ton of reason for the 23 to go for it. And I'm sure he's getting head on his pit board right now. It's like, hey, make the pass for the overall. And uh, it would be nice to start off a season with two straight overall wins. Anderson is out of it as far as catching these two. He's nine seconds off the lead. Then it's Roxon. Craig putting in another rock-solid day. He's fifth. Then it's Caroli, Dungy, Plessinger, eighth. 
Joey Savacci making his return to racing after a torn ACL. Did not race last week. They wanted a couple of more days on the bike. And Freddie Noren, privateer, doing a good job on the BBMX KTM running in 10th. Justin Barsha is 11th. Alex Martin, 12th. Garrett Marchbanks, they're on the FXR Muckoff Club of Mex Yamahas. Shane McElrath, Rockstar Husky, is in 14th. Marshall Welton, the privateer in the Gas Gas, running in 15th. Yeah, you know, Justin Barsha, we mentioned him as really not having the best day that he's had in a while. I just surprised that he's yeah. struggling to get into the top 10. I thought he was going to have a little better day. And, but, you know, we move east, he seems to be a little better in, in those conditions. All right, Tomac just bulldogging his way around this track, just muscling that Yamaha around. His first moto win, joining this Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing crew. I think we all took for granted after he was so brilliant in Supercross and he's so great outdoors. And this team won the title on this bike last year with Dylan Ferrandis. He'll just be up to pace immediately outdoors. It took them clearly three motos to really get this dialed, and he is pulled clear of Sexton. Yep, he's gapped a little bit here. It seems that maybe Chase made a mistake or something, or Eli just got the rhythm going again, but he's just giving them a little bit of cushion, which is going to be a relief when he goes by the mechanics area and realizes he's got another half second or another second. Can he lock this down? Looking at three or four laps to go. Probably three. Just not going to get the two laps to go sign here with a minute 20 left. It will expire the next time around, so it should be three to go here. Yeah. Well, how many storylines do we have? It was Honda domination at round one. We get a moto win at a Jason Anderson earlier today and potentially one out of Eli Tomac. So we have a lot of contenders here. So the keys to the 450, we're, start, we're spot on on it. Starts are important, obviously, but you know someone's got to step up and beat the red bikes. And uh, we had Jason Anderson the first moto, and right now we got Eli Tomac running real strong. Possibly going to do it. So you know, no Honda winning a moto would be a would be a storyline. If Tomac can get this done. It should be exactly what he was looking for. We had some real fear when he was dropping back in the first moto last week that maybe the knee was bothering him. Team manager Jeremy Coker said, trust me, I was worried about the same thing too. You know, you're only one dab of the foot away from tweaking that. But he apparently is fine, no complaints about the knee. And you're looking at one of the all-time greats of this field and of this class getting back to his old form. Uh, it's just fun to watch. He definitely puts the effort in he puts the all the homework in they have a strong family bond there at the Tomac camp and stay in Colorado most of the time and just do a great job he's going for his 56th moto win it's third all time in that category behind only Ricky Carmichael and I believe Ryan Dungey actually and two and a half laps to go in this one I want to watch when they get to that oak tree turn and really point out that he goes through that left-hander with the inside foot on the peg. Right there, too. He does it a lot. I mean, incredible. I, yeah, he's incredible. And it, it's something to try hey, on your Sexton's practice back, day. Now look at Sexton. He's Here's trying the corner. To, watch Tomac right through here. here. Let's see if he can do it again. Yep, feet the whole time. The feet on the whole time. So try that when you're out there riding your bike. Anybody, I tell you, when you get in a rut like that, no, it's good practice. You see him on the balls of the feet. Again, technique similar. We saw Chase Sexton earlier. Gripping the tank as best he can. And then, you know, sometimes he lifts up and sometimes he just kind of dangles it. But most of the time, he rides a lot feet on the pegs. Whoa. Sexton putting in a flurry. Yeah, what did you see little, there, bro? Well, Lily landed right in the face of a big chucker bump, and the bike kind of pitched sideways as he came by the two lap boards. So he knows he's only got two laps to go. And Chase Sexton also knows he only has two laps to go. So if he wants that overall, Chase has to close this gap of two seconds. And he did. He had something going on one side of the track. And he almost got that lead all the way down to nothing. Got it back in striking distance. So the strength, the determination of Chase Sexton. Got to give him credit here. It looked like it was over. Yeah, I mean, he was only able to gain three tenths of a second that lap on the, one of the best riders in the world. But uh, he did. He actually closed a slight amount there. And Eli's not very far ahead. So one little bobble, one lap rider. He could be right on the rear fender. We go back uphill and then back down. Listen to the crowd. Maybe we're going to have another showdown right to the finish like we did earlier. It is. It's just awesome. That track is getting so rough. And Chase, very smooth there. Good run there. He had a nice rut. It looked like Eli was in one with a little more bumps in it. And see what happens here as they roll up those that big uphill. This is an uphill section. It is hard to tell. In the top, you just do a U-turn and go drop right back down. And look at those ruts. Yeah, absolutely. This track is at its most brutal right now. 
and we're looking at perhaps the star of the next generation and the star of this current generation, Eli Tomac. Three straight titles in this division, 27, 18, and 19. Actually did finish second in points last year. He's third for most of the season. Kent Roxon crashed at this race when it was the finale last year and allowed Eli to sneak in there for second. And we have to send a reminder, last year's champion, something. Dylan Ferrandez, last year's champs out. Sexton has something in that part of the track. Something around just a corner yeah. or so before for that fly 150 jump. And then the next two to three corners, he seems to gain. I, I, it's got to be two or three tenths of a second, maybe in a half a second. But then he somehow slips back. But look how close they are. Same picture, same frame. It's going to be one lap oh to go. Oh, my goodness. Chase Sexton is still there. <laughs> we couldn't script this anymore. We've no. got four barn burner motos. This is every worth every penny to come watch this race. And remember, Jason Anderson, who's running third in this race, is going to be your weekend's overall winner if it ends like this because he's going to have a first and a third. Sexton, if he can get Tomac, will rip the overall away from him. So it's all to play for right now on the very last lap. Right now, as we stand, he's mentioned that Chase Sexton, two, you know, a double second place finish gives him 44 points. Jason Anderson with a win, 25, and another 20 would be 45. So he would be your overall winner. But Sexton cl clearly knows that, and he knows he has to get Tomac. Okay, Sexton is right there. Got a little closer in this section. Looking forward to that side of the track we were talking about earlier. Maybe uh, see if where we where it is that Chase Sexton was actually gaining some time. But it seems like on this whole side of the track, he's he's pushing it right now. Oh, look at them both going through that corner, standing up, leaning forward. Yep. Hey, Tomac definitely set the bar for that peg, feet on the pegs, and the current young riders are all trying to adopt it. No question, they're practicing it more. I see it more and more all the time, every week. And look how close look at they this. are. Oh boy. This is it. This is going to be as good as 101. Sexton's okay. on the outside. Right. He was side by side. And remember, oh. there's a section of the track where he has something. Right we have here. not got this there is yet. It. This is it. This is coming up to it. Okay, he's off that hip jump. The left here and down the hill. And then a, Can he a, set up Tomac? A right and a right and then a 150 jump. There's something going on there. That's a smooth shot there. Maybe that's the line right there. That's where it is. There he's it carrying is. way more speed on the outside. He hits the fly 150 and he's right on. Oh, look at this. Oh, they choose the same line. Now, what are they going to do? Jumping jump, into this section. Tomac stayed. Uh, Tomac okay. launches. Yep. Sexton, and then Sexton does not. Down. Oh. To the top of this elevator jump. This is a good corner for Tomac. Sexton's got to be really quick around the outside. In fact, you picked the middle. Oh, boy, yeah. Sexton just did not get the best run out of that rut. He tried, had to change his line, and he had to try something a little bit different, I yep. think, and then that's what happened. So this is the old coming in the corner. This is the old finish line jump. We got that one wall jump that has just gotten so nasty. These guys aren't even jumping off of it anymore, but Tomac chooses. They both chose to. Sexton's out of time. A great run by him, but Eli Tomac is back. He takes his first moto victory of the season. And because of that, Jason Anderson's elusive quest to finally get an overall win in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, he is finally going to reach the top of the mountain here with one three scores. Oh, he finally gets his first overall. And you know what? Quietly, that's what your call was. That's what you were thinking. And well, we were both. Thinking, yeah, I mean, he was the fastest in qualifying. Yep. He was kind of quiet last week. There it is. Jason Anderson finally has an overall win in Pro Motocross. And I'm not sure he's sure. Yes, he's he said that I win. <laughs> Yep, right there, yes. the flagger. I, yep, yep, went along. Did I win the overall? He did. So that's pretty cool that you have to come across if I have to ask if you won the overall. Unbelievable. He had won four motos in this series before. Plenty of podium finishes, but had never gotten that overall. 16 career podiums. And finally gets the overall win. And we've seen it go the opposite yeah, way for him a lot. That's the overall, baby. Yeah, <laughs> that's the overall. There you go. We had seen it go the opposite way where the math worked against him. Today it finally went in his direction. There you go. That's uh, that's fantastic for Jason Anderson. He finally flipped a helmet flip. <laughs> uh, that's like a mic drop in motocross, right? Yes, the helmet, helmet flip. The helmet like flip, it. that's a mic drop. All right, man. Congratulations to the... Yeah. Oh, he has spent, he gave it his all to get that spot. So many stories to follow early in this 450 campaign. A moto win for Tomac and overall for Anderson. Another great weekend for the Honda riders, Sexton and Roxon. We'll talk to them when we return.
The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. Always some cool trophies on the line here at Hangtown. And the biggest one is going to be grabbed by Jason Anderson. That was good stuff and a torrid fight for those podium positions today. All right, so that's the Hangtown story. We'll show you how it unfolded here in the second moto with a Lucas Oil race recap. Antonio Carolla, yeah, the rider out of Italy, the nine-time world champ grabbing the whole shot. And Ken Roxon goes to work immediately. There's Roxon on the 94 Honda. He would get around Caroli there, bring his teammate Chase Sexton with him. Ryan Dungey, a good start. Uh, Tomac's about sixth early on. And the Honda boys battle for the lead. They did absolutely. You can see right here, Chase Sexton had a great run out of that corner, carried a little bit more momentum, and was able to make the pass around the outside of his teammate, Ken Roxon. Thought it might have been over from there because they had a pretty big gap. But then Eli Tomac got going. Yeah, this is classic Eli Tomas, especially at the Hangtown track. Mm -hmm. Gets around Roxon for second, and then makes short work of the gap between himself and Sexton, and it was a battle. Yeah, we talk, talk about that. This is the second time he had contact with the lap rider in the two different motos, but uh, luckily it didn't impede him in any way. Here's Tomac's turn right here. Feet on the pegs, inside. Actually had to dab a little bit there. Well, it was just Not a dab, feet off. It was a ballast over to their little weight, weight yes. bias. Yep, that was it. But uh, he was feet off the pegs three quarters of the way through. And then here you see right here, Anderson makes the pass on Ken Roxon for the third place. And the overall win puts him in position to take that overall win. He makes it around the outside of Ken Roxon. Credit to Chase Sexton. He never gave up on it. Last three laps, he put in a flurry. Got that close to Tomac at the end. But Eli holds on for his 56th career moto win. That is third all time. Sexton close, but he's going to have to settle for second overall today. And there it is. Anderson, who had beaten Sexton in the first photo by a couple of tenths and gets third in this photo, the 1-3 gets it done. Phenomenal racing throughout the day, man. That's great stuff. We are pumped. Roxon and Craig round out the top five. Crowley, Dungey, Plessinger, Savachi, and Dorn. That was top ten in the photo. Let's send it down to the podium with Jason Thomas. Jason Anderson, your overall winner. You finally got it done. Huge day, and I don't know if you could tell the battle out front was going to dictate whether you got that win or not, but either way, incredible day. Yeah, you know, that second moto I had to work to get up there, and honestly, I came across the uh, mechanics area the last lap, and he said, you did it. I thought I got on the podium, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I went up to the guys, like, did I win? He's like, yes. So I was like, damn, 12 years too long. You know, it's been 12 years giving it a go at this outdoor stuff, and I got my first win, so I'm damn happy. Thanks to the whole team. Kawasaki Monster, Alpine Star, Aero, Scott. I did it, so I'm stoked, and uh, let's keep this good season going. It has been a phenomenal year for the band, second in the Monster Energy Supercross Championship, and off to a great run here in motocross. I, I would have, I would have lost a bet with you if you had told me it's 12 years he's been riding outdoor pro motocross, and he just got his first win. Uh, but it was, it was worth it. I'm glad I was here to see it. Startling stat, but it's gone now. It's gone now. That's how he did it. One point more than Sexton scored today. Sexton and Tomac round out the podium. Let's go back to JT on the box. Chase Sexton, you were in a fight. It seemed like all day, right? And I, I know you probably wanted to be a little bit better than this, but again, you leave here, you're strong, you're at the front. This is exactly where you wanted to be. For sure. Uh, I just couldn't get away from it today. It was uh, it was a tough two motos. I led a lot of laughs, but I uh, didn't, didn't uh, get the win. So uh, overall, I feel like my riding has been really good. I know Eli is strong here, especially second motos. And to be able to latch on to him and uh, give up a fight was good for me. Um, so I got the red plate. I just got to keep being consistent, getting those good starts, and uh, yeah, just have some fun. It's been, uh, it's been good so far. Just feeling really comfortable on the bike. The team's done a great job, and uh, looking forward to these uh, next uh, 10 rounds we got. So uh, it's going to be a fun season. Oh, he's bummed he didn't get the moto or overall win today, but I got some good news. Look at the points. Wow, 12 points after round two rounds. That's uh, that's good news right there. Absolutely. Anderson and Tomac, you know they will be heard from with the momentum that they built up today. All right, we'll send it back down to the podium. Jason Thomas has more. We're down here with Eli Tomac. You finally get a race win. It's been a minute. I expect you to up here sooner. That had to feel good to, uh, to get on top of the box there. Yeah, that was just uh, some fun racing right there. Felt so good. Uh, you know, me and Chase had a great battle, you know, that last half. Uh, just found good lines, good flow that time, was able to just, just to do my thing. So, uh, you know, I'm so pumped for uh, the Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha, and, uh, you know, we, we got our act together this week. 
All right, and that's just going to make this championship that much more exciting. With Tomac starting to stir, here's your Honda, uh, Honda upcoming schedule. We'll go to Thunder Valley in Colorado next weekend. High Point, Pennsylvania, Red Bud in Michigan, Southwick, Sands of Massachusetts. It'll go all the way through the country. We end Fox Raceway. That is Southern California for our finale. You are fired up in here, Brock Lover. I am very fired up. It's, <laughs> I'm a fan of the sport, I'm just telling you. I just love it. I love seeing good racing, and uh, we saw it in all four motos today. Absolutely. Totally a true honor to be uh, asked to be in this booth. Well, it was a pleasure having you, the Golden Boy, the six-time champ. Great job today. Jason Thomas, good job patrolling on the racetrack. But really got to give it up to the riders put on a show. Jet Lawrence digging so deep to win the 250 class today. Eli Tomac putting on a great run in the final moto, but it is Jason Anderson's long quest to become a Pro Motocross winner complete today. Congrats to him winning Hangtown.